Okay, I believe that we are live and I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So welcome today, we're gonna to be talking about loose brush strokes. And I've got a bunch of brushes here, we're gonna talk about them. <laughs> um, but if you are here live, you can leave comments and uh, your questions down in the comment section below. And I will try to get to those at the very end. Okay, so I'm Erin with Snowberry Design Co. And you can find me on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and Pinterest, all at Snowberry Design Co. So there's that. And I'm just gonna jump in. Uh, so why loose brush strokes? Uh, sometimes paintings can look, look overworked and learning how to manage your brush is really going to help you create a more professional looking painting. And I don't know if you've experienced this where you've had like uh, puddles of paint that kind of dry in some places. And um, a lot of that has to do with how you're working your brush. And I'm gonna show you a few simple things that you can do to improve your paintings. So let's look at these different brushes. I've got several different shapes. I've got this, these are cat tongue brushes. We kind of have, have that flat brush and then it comes to a point. So I've got those in a couple different sizes. I've got some round brushes in the smaller size. This is a six and a four. I've got some other fun ones. I've got this fan brush and a filbert brush. Filbert is just, it's flat, but then it's got this kind of tapered rounded end to the bristles. And then I've got a bunch of round brushes. These are my go-to. I love round brushes in a variety of sizes, 14, 10, another 10, and a zero. And then I've got, this is really fun. This is an extra long liner. Look at those bristles. <laughs> that one's really fun. And then this is a dagger. So it's got that really steep incline on the, the angle there. And then these are angle brushes and my flat brush. Now I wanted to show you these just because it doesn't really matter what brush you choose to use. You just wanna make sure that you really explore what your brush can do. And so we'll kind of go through that. Um, but for today, I'm just gonna be using a round brush and I'm going to use this size 10 round brush. And I'm also going to be using this size 20 round brush. So the first thing that you can do uh, to kind of improve your paintings with a looser look is to move to a bigger brush. And I know that seems really scary for some people, <laughs> um, but it's true. Bigger brushes will actually help you loosen up and it'll teach you to have more control when you're using a smaller brush as well. So let me go back to this. This is a size four. Um, you just have more area to cover when you're working with a bigger brush might be able to hear my baby squealing in the background. He's supposed to be taking a nap. So you can see just by pressing down, oh, it's kind of hard to see, but um, this one is a little bit wider than this one. And so filling in areas, it really is helpful to use a bigger brush it's also helpful just to practice trying to get finer details with a bigger brush. I love using a really large brush. So this is a four, a 10 and a 20, all round brushes. Okay, so you're going to use a bigger brush. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to hold your brush up higher. 
So you're not going to use your brush like a pencil. You're not gonna wanna hold it like this. You're going to wanna move this up so that you are at least halfway up, if not like holding it at the tip. I don't tend to use it at the tip. I tend to hold it about here. That's more comfortable for me. Um, but holding your brush up higher is going to help you have more control. So when you're holding down here, your hand is so close to the paper that you can't really get those nice even strokes. When you're holding back here, you can kind of use your whole arm and kind of see where you're going. And that's the other thing, you wanna use your entire arm. What I mean by that is if I'm trying to do a straight line, let's see, and I'm just, I'm just focusing on moving my wrist. I can get it pretty straight, but if I use my entire arm and I've grounded my, my hand right on the paper, I can get a much smoother line. So just remember, up higher for looser painting, hold it down lower for more fine details. Because there's nothing wrong with painting like this with a pencil, but it's really more for those fine lines and details. You want to hold it up higher if you're doing the general painting. So let's talk about what your brush can do. And this is the fun part. This is where you get to experiment with your brush and really really get to know it because that is really the key in watercolor painting in general. You're just gonna play around with your supplies, your paper, your brush, because everyone is going to use it just a little bit differently. How much water I add is not gonna be replicated to how much water you're using. So you just wanna play around and find what feels comfortable to you. And I apologize, my camera is not very, um, high up, the equipment that I'm gonna be using hasn't arrived quite yet. So that's why my palette is off camera. Okay, so I'm gonna use this size 20 and we're just gonna play around a little bit. So see what happens when you just press down on your brush and, and don't move it at all. You can kind of see the shape of the brush there and something like that is really great for your petal shapes or your leaf shapes. What happens if you hold the brush upright? Or if you apply a lot of pressure? What happens if you just place little dots? And it's important to make time to play with your supplies because that's really when you start to have aha moments. Like if you're just playing around and you're like, wait a second, <laughs> that actually looks like a vine. I could totally use that in my next floral arrangement. And you just play around and find what works for you. So there are some exercises you can try. And I usually like to have you practice doing thin lines, see if, how thin you can get that line with a big brush. And then also thick too. And sometimes, I'll do that again. When you press down your brush, you kind of wiggle the brush a little bit so that the bristles can fan out before you pull. And that's really useful for doing larger washes. you can really utilize your brush. And make it fan out even bigger. Okay. 
You also want to try twisting the brush. So what happens if you press down and you kind of twist into a circle? The idea here with playing too is once you move on to painting from a reference photo, which we'll do in a second, but once you move on to that, knowing how to maneuver your brush and um, just how to work your brush in general is going to help uh, when you're simplifying the shapes and it's going to help so that your, your painting doesn't look overworked. So you can kind of see here, it's kind of hard to see, but here too, where I've gone over the area a couple of times, it's kind of pooled up. Whereas down here, where I just did one stroke, it's a little bit more even. So that's something to keep in mind too. Is you want to place your brush stroke and then leave it. Because the more you play with it, the more it's going to look fussed over. Yeah, so what happens if you apply pressure while curving the brush and then lifting up? You kind of get this fun little curve, which actually this right here is such a great drill if you want to practice for roses. This kind of curved petal shape. So apply pressure while lifting up. And you'll get the hang of it more the more you practice. But I wanted to just show you a couple little things like this before we dive in to um, an actual painting. So I'm going to show you the reference photo that I'm going to be working with. And then we will work together on it. Okay, so this is a picture I took of a rose. I'm sorry about the glare. Let's see, it's a little bit better. Okay, so when I approach this painting, I'm, you almost wanna squint your eyes so that you only see the basic shapes. And we're gonna do this with the biggest brush. Okay, so I've got this rounded shape for the rose. And I'm going to try and do this in as few brush strokes as I can. because that's gonna help it not look overworked. So that's a good place to start. And then I'm going to choose what I'm going to focus on down here with the leaves because the whole background is, is green. So I'm just gonna choose a couple little things to focus on here. I'm just mixing my green right now adding in some warm yellow and a little bit of this quinacridone. Oh no, I don't know what color this is. I'm gonna have to look that up. It's been a minute. Okay, so with this leaf shape here, I'm actually going to do this kind of vine shape here. So first I'm gonna place my, my stem and then I'm going to really use my brush and come up with that shape. This is going to let your brush uh, or your painting look a little bit looser just because you're letting the brush do the work. You're not really telling the brush, okay, we're gonna do an outline of the flower here. We're gonna do 
you know, a stem here and you're just kind of letting the brush do the work for you. And then there's this kind of smaller vine over here. So I'm just gonna do a little bit over here. And in my picture, there's not really a lot going on over here, but I'm just going to add something in just to help my painting kind of round out a little bit. Okay, so now the important part is you wait for this first layer to dry completely. And I know it looks like a blobby mess right now, but things are gonna to start to take shape. So we wanna wait, especially for this to dry. I can see there's like a little pool of paint right here that we want to dry. And I forgot. See if my dryer's on. It is. Okay, so just a moment. <laughs> okay, this is why I hate using blow dryer because it messes with the painting. But that's okay, we're going to make it work. So now that that's a little more dry, I can go back in and add in some of these darker details. Now, if it's hard to kind of picture where things need to be dark, one trick is to make, let's see, where's the saturation here? Make the paint or the, the picture black and white, and then you can easily see, okay, I know that this part here needs to be a little bit darker. These down here are a little bit lighter, so I'm not going to add more layers there. And now that I already know what color I'm using, I can kind of uh, just guess as far as the color goes. If I was trying to match it perfectly, I might just go back to the color. Since I am just going to wing it, then I'm just going to look at this. So I'm not trying to be photorealistic either, but I am trying to capture these kind of roughly layers. So I'm going to start here in the center. And again, we're really going to utilize this brush because that's going to make the painting just look looser and not overworked. And it's not going to be perfect. We're just getting that general shape going. Okay. And then we're going to let that dry. There are a couple more actually little petal pieces down here. And I'm just gonna let that be. And then down here, you can kind of see there's some texture where the veins of the leaves are. And there's also some darker spots kind of along the edges here. I'm going to try and recreate that. I'm using Payne's gray, which is a really deep, like navy blue gray. And I've mixed that into the green that I already used here to kind of darken some of these spots. Now I had somebody ask me the other day how, how to blend something like this when uh, you don't want the hard edges. And the key here is really to make sure that your underneath layer is totally dry. And then what you're going to do is I've cleaned off my brush and I'm just gonna go along that edge and kind of blend it out just with plain water. So then you have your darker spot over here, but it's not going to have that hard line right in the center and you can go back in and tap in color if you want to. 
this technique works really well on arches watercolor paper. This is not arches. <laughs> so it's not working 100%, but on arches paper, it really works amazing. And we'll just wait a second for that to dry. Okay. And I don't really want, <laughs> I don't really want to break out the the blow dryer again. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually using the same peach color. And I'm just going to pull this back in. This is way longer than I wanted it to be, just because the blow dryer kind of ruined that. So I'm just going to add in a couple little strokes here to kind of make it look more purposeful. And I know it looks like a blobby mess right now, but we're going to clean things up as we go as the layers dry. But if you're really looking for a very loose painting, you could end here. Um, if you want it to be a little bit more detailed, a little tighter, a little more depth, then you wait for this to dry and you continue adding until you feel like it's done. Now, for me, I like to have a lot of depth, a lot of contrast in my paintings. So I'm going to keep going with this one. But you can certainly end where you feel like you need to. Now I'm going to start thinking about this kind of center point here in my rows and what color I want to use to kind of darken that. So I'm going to use this. It's, um, I'm going to have to relearn all of my colors. It's been a long time since I've painted while explaining what colors I'm using. So I believe this is, uh, I'm going to mess it up. So I'll look it up and post it, but it is Daniel Smith. I know that. I love Daniel Smith paints. But I'm kind of going for a deeper orange red color. And to get an even rustier kind of look to it, I'm going to add in a little bit of green. And that's just going to make it a little less vibrant, a little more brown. And it's going to look really brown in my palette, but it's going to look nice over here. I hope. <laughs> Sometimes you have an idea for something and then it doesn't really turn out but that's okay. That's the whole part of painting is just kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't. So I'm going in now with this kind of rusty brown color. And some of these spots are still very wet. So I'm just kind of tapping in the color. Okay, and I don't want to overwork this too much, so I'm going to leave the rows just like that. Um, there's There are a couple little petals over here, actually, that I'm just going to add that little tiny bit of depth there. But other than that, I think I'm going to call this good. And then once these leaves are dry, I can go in 
and add some smaller details. Now, smaller details, I'm going in with a size 10. I started with a 20, now I'm going to a 10. I'm using the same peachy brown orange color. And then I'm going to paint in the stems. Now notice I'm holding the brush closer to the bristles and I'm trying to hold my brush a little more upright. That's just going to get a finer point. I feel like these kind of detail lines, I've done them forever. I always know it's one of my paintings because I have these little lines. Now this little puddle of paint is still drying. So I'm not going to touch that at all yet. I'll come back to it once it's totally dry. But I am going to use the same approach that I'm doing for these other ones. Just lightly painting in some detail lines. And I kind of love, you can kind of see here, this underneath leaf part has several colors happening, but adding that detail over the top just helped finish it off. And this too is still wet. I'm just going to leave it. Now, if you didn't want to have this just on a white background, in the very, very beginning when I was starting, um, what I would have done is paint this portion and then paint green completely around it, leaving it really light. You wanna start really light and then add more layers on top. I'm a big Disney nerd. And back in the day, what they would do is paint the background separately than the little cells of animation and they'd lay the animation on top of that that's kind of what you're doing in watercolor is you want to lay down the background and then add the details on top of it. And you kind of have to think of it as like layers rather than a whole painting at once. And then you're slowly kind of bringing out the layer or bringing out the detail as you add layers. So we're almost done here and I'll be doing this every Wednesday. I'm not sure if it's always going to be at 10 a.m. or if we will try to switch but nap time this is what works for me right now so it might continue to be at nap time <laughs> we might switch it up but you can plan on Wednesdays for sure. And I will be back with another live video. And you can find this live replay on my Facebook group, the Snowberry Design Co. community, or you can find it on YouTube. So if you're not on Facebook, you can catch it on YouTube. If you would like to be in the community where we share a lot of our works in progress, or you want to get feedback, or you have specific questions, I'm in there a lot. I really want to work on this, but I know I've got to wait. So I'm just going to start.
start here. And I'm just avoiding this general area right now. Let me see if I can find questions and then I'll do a couple of minutes of Q&A. See if I can figure this out. If not, I will answer your questions in a future video for sure. Okay. I can't seem to figure out the comments. So <laughs> if you've left a comment, I will, I will look at it and get back to you. I'm just going, going to wait for this to dry and then add little details. It's still wet. So I'll wait for that to dry because I'm not going to use the blow dryer again. We saw what happened before. <laughs> and then I'll post a picture of this when I'm all finished. Next time I do this, I think I'm gonna work through a landscape. And so if you are excited about landscapes and you wanna see kind of this process, that's what I'm gonna be doing next week. So the same kind of approach, we'll do the uh, loose brush strokes kind of thing where I'm showing you how I'm gonna build a landscape with really loose strokes. All right, thank you so much for watching.